The Brown Box by Amp RX. It's a box and it's brown and you pay a lot of money for the box. But wait, there's more. Now to cut through all the marketing, half-truths, and snake oil on the internet, I paid full price for mine and nobody did me any favors. Quite simply, the brown box is a voltage attenuator and it's specifically made for tube guitar amps. Over the years, the AC voltage coming out of the outlets has risen steadily and in certain cities quite considerably. If you could do me a favor and humor me, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you have a voltmeter, please check your wall voltage and let me know what it is and where you are. In Nashville, voltages run hot all over town. My wall voltage regularly hits 125, and even in the middle of the night, I've actually seen it hit 126. So you might be thinking, so what? An extra five or six volts can't be that significant. Well, until you consider the role that the power transformer plays in your guitar amp, it steps up the voltage. That means that five or six volts on the primary takes everything up higher on the secondary. That stepped up voltage then gets converted from AC to DC inside of your amp. Dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Because alternating is alternating, keep in mind that there's a peak to the waveform. But with direct current, DC remains constant. Therefore, direct current is really peak voltage at all times. <laughs> It's a very basic explanation, but the idea and the takeaway is that when the wall voltage is higher, everything else inside of your amp is higher too, and that can strain the components. But beyond the components, at a certain voltage, the amp just doesn't sound as good. But when they hear no, they make you cry. So it's that sound that's coming through that's really important. You gotta think about this. Well, biasing one of my amps, I discovered that the plate voltages were way, way hot, well beyond the published limits. Everything was a little too high. Heater voltages, everything. So I had to lower the line voltage in conjunction with some other modifications on the amp. When I got the amp happier, I found that yes, it also did sound better. AmpRx calls this, quote, finding your magic number. Now because they can't be liable, and I fully appreciate that, understand that, even agree with that, they don't go into too much detail about the process for that. But the short version is that you want to find the starting reference for about what voltage your power transformer was wound for. The label on my 55 Tweed says 110. Wall voltages in the 1950s were considerably lower. The back panel of my 61 Blonde says 117. I love vintage amps. I heard Robin Ford say in an interview that his Dumble is very sensitive to power and happens to sound best at 122. Yes, it's romanticized in guitar culture that Eddie Van Halen was running his marshals at some ridiculously low voltage, but he was also a rock star, and you gotta remember that. In a world where techs were plentiful and tubes were plentiful, and the world of rock and roll was hardly known for moderation. So can it be bad to run things too low? Just like high voltage on a heater can overstress it. For example, think of a light bulb. If you're in North America, would you wanna power your light bulbs at 240? Probably not. Very low heater voltage on a tube can also be bad on it. So you don't wanna to go too high and you don't wanna to go too low. The basic answer is yes. If you're still using tube amps that you actually care about and you really do love, especially if those amps are rare, vintage, you're really invested in those amps, you should probably get some sort of voltage attenuation like the brown box because there's nowhere that I'm aware of that's really immune to these increased wall voltages. We've all heard about problems with the grid reliability lately. As just one example, three times in the past three months, they've lost power at a rental space that belongs to my family on the opposite coast. And it's a medical space about a mile from a major hospital. For 30 years before, that never used to happen, and now it does quite often. This may make it even more important to monitor your voltages and keep an eye on this kind of stuff. And if you happen to be really lucky and in a rare situation where you read your voltage and you go, it's 121, well then maybe you don't need one. You're certainly not gonna hurt anything at all if all you use the brown box for is to set things at 120 and don't make any other adjustments. One of the main advantages to the brown box is consistency. Now that's not to be confused with regulation. It's not a voltage regulator, but consistency. No matter where you are, you can set it to 120 or 117 or whatever your magic number is. 
And if that voltage starts to move upwards from there, you just make an adjustment on the box to dial in a little bit more attenuation and it'll get you right back to where you wanna be. It's really convenient because there's a readout of the voltage right there on the screen of the brown box. So it's an all around winner, whether you're just a player or whether you're in the greater minority of players who also like to work on your own stuff and have the tools, know-how, and focus to work on tube amps safely. If so, then you can dial things in even a little bit more or just get a tech to do it for you. Since I was doing it for myself, I found the starting point that I wanted to get things to with that amp. And then I played around plus minus 5% and past that I won't go into a technical discussion. <laughs> So I hope that helps and let me know in the comments what your wall voltage is if you're like me and you keep an eye on this stuff. In the meantime, keep having fun with the guitar. You gotta have fun with your music every single day. If Ted knew he was gonna die right now, he said, leave us with a parting thing you want us to remember you by. I'd say, have a lot of fun with your music. Right. It should always pervade, override everything. We have to work hard. But right. If it ain't fun, we're doing something wrong. I don't mean every second, but no, I you gotta every day have fun with guitar. Like your life more, you're happier. And if it takes longer, who said it had to be fast? Right. You still get there eventually. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, we sure enjoyed the ride. So keep on having fun with the guitar. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so and hit the notification bell so that you receive regular updates. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again really soon in the next video.